There are now 8 billion people living on Earth. Since the Industrial Revolution about 200 years ago, human action has caused innovation and creation. But since 1500, around 900 species have gone extinct at a rate between 1,000 and 10,000 times greater than the natural extinction rate. The average global temperature on Earth has increased by at least 1.1 degrees Celsius since 1880. But there is hope. Your actions matter to reduce and reverse the course of climate change. Small actions like carpooling, water conservation, sorting your trash, and reducing food waste are all actions that combat excessive energy and resource use. Diet also has a huge impact on greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, sustainable purchases and proper disposal of appliances can reduce your effect on the climate. All of these choices and many more have impacts on the environment. By thinking about them together and pushing for governmental and institutional change, we can create a meaningful impact and help to preserve and protect this beautiful earth we call home for generations to come. First, let's take a glimpse into clean transportation. Commuters often use cars to get from their homes to work. Carpooling is an easy way to reduce overall carbon emissions. Other ways to make transportation cleaner are walking, biking, and public transport. It's important that cities encourage and support all of these modes of transportation. Gosh, traffic is really bad. We might be late to class. Yeah. Hey, why don't you move over to the carpool lane? It looks like it's going a lot faster. That's a good catch. Wow, this is a lot better. Hey, thanks for driving, by the way. Yeah, of course. I love talking with you. Plus, it's easy to carpool. It saves money on repairs, gas, and less pollution. That's so true. That makes me think, why don't people carpool more? I don't know. Water, vital to life, precious, yet all around us. Water makes up most of the land surface on Earth, yet only 1% of this water is drinkable. In California, there is a massive water shortage where dams and lakes have reached record lows in recent years. This mega drought is the worst in over a thousand years and conditions have been made worse by climate change. Governments must look into solutions for water insecurity, an issue that will only grow with time. Investing in ways to cleanse sewage water and placing policies to limit unnecessary water consumption is a good way to start. While governments do their part, we can do ours. In our own homes, we can save water by when it's not sunny out, so the water doesn't evaporate. I guess that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Dude, turn off the water while you're brushing your teeth, you're wasting it. Oh my god, you're so right.
Wow, look at all these refrigerators. They're so fancy and high tech. Yeah, our refrigerator looks ancient in comparison. Oh, hey, I remember learning about the ozone layer in school. What do refrigerators have to do with it? I don't know. Let's watch this video and find out. Hi, today we're talking about a few different types of refrigerants and their environmental impact. First, we start pre-1995 with CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. These are made up of chlorine, fluorine, and carbon. They don't dissolve in water or easily break down in the atmosphere. Because of this, CFCs can reach the ozone layer in the stratosphere, where they react with UV rays and destroy ozone. In these areas where ozone is destroyed, UV rays can travel to the surface of the Earth. In the 1980s, an ozone hole was found over Antarctica, which revealed the effects of human activity on the atmosphere. If the ozone hole spread, life would be dangerous as UV rays directly hit the Earth and people's skin. This can lead to skin cancer as UV rays break DNA. Next, I will show exactly how CFCs cause ozone depletion. In this example, I will use CFC 11. UV rays first hit the CFC molecule and split the molecule. The lone chlorine atom then can react with ozone and create chlorine monoxide and oxygen. Then the chlorine monoxide can then re react with a single oxygen atom to create another chlorine atom and oxygen. This supports the Roland Molina theory, which states that each chlorine atom in the stratosphere can destroy 100,000 ozone molecules. This same process happens with, with HCFC re refrigerants, which also contain chlorine. In 1987, the issue of ozone depletion caused the US and 22 other countries to sign the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. The Montreal Protocol banned CFCs. It was an international effort and success as the ozone hole shrunk dramatically. This ban led to the rise of ozone-friendly hydrofluorocarbon or HFC refrigerants. Unfortunately though, HFCs are very potent greenhouse gases. Some have a global warming potential thousands of times more than carbon dioxide. There are a few other types of refrigerants that have less global warming potential, but are flammable. These include HFO refrigerants and HC refrigerants. They can be used in some situations as replacements to more damaging refrigerants. Wow, who knew refrigerants were so harmful to the environment? Oh. Hi, uh, I'm Cody. Is there anything you need help with today? Uh, um, we have an old refrigerator that stopped working and we were looking for something new. Um, but we wanted to make sure we got rid of our old refrigerator properly. Any suggestions? Well, of course. The EPA has a recyclable appliance disposal program where you can recycle your old appliances for free. But, uh, but there are also many recycling centers in the area. In your case, you can look into companies that have a trade-in program where getting a new appliance. Ultimately, it's important that you are disposing of old appliances where refrigerants will be properly destroyed and recycled instead of vented. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. Are refrigerants really that bad? Well, they cause a lot of warming. I heard that over 30 years, preventing all refrigerant leaks that otherwise would be released can avoid emissions equivalent to 57.15 gigatons of carbon dioxide. That's huge. We'll definitely make sure our refrigerator gets taken care of properly. Are modern refrigerators dangerous too? Unfortunately, many still can contribute to warming. There is no, there is some new alternative refrigerants technologies that might change that, but for now, refrigerants are mostly unchanged. Well, then what can we do? Modern refrigerants are still a huge step up from the ones even two years ago. Just make sure you're checking for leaks if you hear a hissing sound, see water below your refrigerator, or smell a strange odor. And the most important thing to do is ensure your refrigerant is properly disposed of at the end of its life. This seems like a huge deal. What is the government doing? The EPA has implemented programs and bans on venting refrigerants, but in my opinion, there needs to be more accountability and incentives for these to be effective. 
We should also support developing countries with economic incentives and technology. Yeah, I agree. Maybe we should try and reduce our reliance on refrigerants. Yeah, I actually read that more plant covers and underground cooling systems can be reduced reliance on air conditioning. Yeah. Exactly. There are many ways buildings can be engineered to be more energy efficient, and it happens to also reduce refrigerant use. This refrigerator looks perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, it does. I think we found a new fridge. Awesome. Let me help you check that out. To ensure that your refrigerants are properly recycled, bring your appliances and e-waste to a recycling center such as this one where they can be recycled. I took a tour of Rapid Recycle and took a look at the appliances and e-waste that are recycled there. For example, microwaves are accepted as well as computers and servers. Formal e-waste recycling usually involves disassembling the electronics, separating and categorizing the contents. We, do, we break down the boards into various grade. Uh, motherboards are what's considered high grade, and it goes down, graduates down from motherboard. So. In a similar fashion, different types of metals as well as wires, cords, and cables are all separated out. A wide range of appliances are also processed at facilities such as this one, from refrigerators to ovens to washers and dryers. Functional appliances are kept at the facility to be sold at a lower price, but in the case of an appliance like a refrigerator or an AC that is broken, the refrigerant is taken care of in one of two ways. What we used to do is, we used to have uh, lined up here, typically in twos, more refrigerators. Um, we had a company come in, and it's kind of funny, they have Rapid in their name too, called uh, Rapid Recovery. And what they would do is, they would come back here with a truck, and the truck had like either four or six different canisters because there are different refrigerants depending on how the, old the refrigerator is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so anyway, they would come in mass and basically um, drain all the refrigerators and actually ACs too. Yeah. So it's uh, ACs and refrigerators. Now what we do is they take the refrigerators whole Okay. okay, so they make the money off the refrigerant and they also make the money from the um, metal itself and some of the copper parts and stuff like that that they take apart. Ultimately, the potentially harmful refrigerants stored in these refrigerators and ACs are properly disposed of when taken to a recycling center such as this one. We know that the leaking of refrigerants has dangerous side effects on the atmosphere and on the ozone layer. So do your part and bring old appliances to recycling centers where their refrigerants can be recycled or disposed of in a proper manner. In addition, visiting Rapid Recycle opened my eyes to another problem entirely, e-waste. I have to address this issue even though it's separate from the issue of refrigerants. Electronic devices are composed of toxic heavy metals as well as hazardous chemicals. When these are disposed of in the landfill, they can leach into the water supply and potentially have adverse effects on human health. But the issue of e-waste is not one with a simple solution. Like many environmental problems, governments and corporate manufacturers must work together to create a greener future. One example is a federal law in the US that could help develop a better e-waste recycling system and help compel manufacturers to create more durable and greener products. The best thing individuals can do is reduce their consumption of electronic devices and ensure that their electronic devices don't end up in the landfill but instead are recycled or reused.
One of the easiest things you can do to reduce waste is proper trash sorting. Little things like sorting can really add up. Keeping food scraps out of the landfill reduces methane emissions, and increasing recycling reduces unnecessary consumption and production of goods. When throwing something away, be cautious to consider if it belongs in the recycling, compost, or landfill bins. Sometimes the answer is not obvious, so it's really important to take a moment and really think about it. No matter where you are, whether it be at school, work, or at home, it's important to be mindful of sorting. Hey, that's not recyclable. Who cares? Not sorting your trash means that it can get contaminated and reduce their ability to be recycled. Well, should I have just thrown it in the recycling then? No, it would contaminate the recycling. Oh. So, should I put it in compost instead? No, that would contaminate the compost. And before you ask, putting it in the landfill means more methane, greenhouse gases, would be released as it decomposes. So, what should I do instead? Here, I'll sort it for you. Okay, I get it. In the kitchen, put food scraps in a compost container to compost at home or go into your green organics bin. Anything alive in your lifetime can be composted. Napkins, tissues, tea bags, cardboard, and of course, food scraps can all be composted. There are many ways to compost at home, including open air composting, bin composting, and vermicomposting. Compost acts as a natural fertilizer and improves soil health. Each of these methods requires a varying amount of work, but in general, composting is easy and fun. Next, let's discuss recycling. Most rigid plastics, clean paper products, cans and bottles should be recycled. Clean aluminum foil should also be crumbled up and recycled. If you are at home, it is best to quickly rinse anything recyclable that has food on it, like a glass jar for example. Plus, it is often best to replace caps on bottles before recycling. But the best way to reduce waste and really help the environment is to reduce our consumption. For example, you may be tempted to throw away all your old papers or homework at the end of the semester. But it is best to save papers that are unused on one side, so they can be reused. Now, after printing for a while, you might notice the ink fading. Well, it's an easy fix, right? You throw out your old toner cartridge and add the new one. But in reality, it's not that simple. Toner cartridges are hazardous waste and need to be treated as such. Household hazardous waste cannot be thrown in your home landfill or recycling bins. So what exactly is hazardous waste? Hazardous waste is waste with properties that make it potentially dangerous or harmful to human health and the environment. A lot of these items are very familiar to us. Like batteries, computers, paint, motor oil, and antifreeze. We use these things often, and they're not necessarily dangerous to us. But for example, I would never eat a battery or drink paint because I know there's stuff in there that might be hurtful to me. Similarly, this waste cannot be disposed of in a landfill because the chemicals in it may pollute our air, water, or soil. Landfills are simply not equipped to deal with these items, and they should not be going into the landfill. Hazardous waste is similar to e-waste in that it needs to go to a facility that will help recycle or dispose of it properly. If you are ever unsure if something is considered hazardous or considering what your options are, I recommend checking out the website resource.stopwaste.org where you can type in the name of any item and see your options for disposal and where they should be going. All hazardous waste must go to a specialized facility to get rid of it. Many of these facilities will offer drop off for free. Many waste management companies also have special days where they will come to collect your waste for reuse or landfill. 
Calling your waste management company is a great way to learn more about these opportunities in your hometown. It is great to make an effort to find a new home or recycle anything you need to dispose of. But if you can, it is best to reduce consumption. One way to do this is shopping at refill stores to cut back on single-use plastics. Here I am at Resource Fill in Lafayette, California. Going to refill stores can cut down on consumption of single-use plastics. Let's get refilling and talk to the owner, Kristen. Refilling is an easy two-step process. Containers are first weighed and then refilled. Um, could you please just introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'm Kristen Crody. I am the owner here at Resourceful in Lafayette. Okay, and what inspired you to open Resourceful? The biggest inspiration was actually visiting other refill shops and wishing there was one in Lafayette. Um, my husband and I have always been what we think is really eco-friendly and um, when we weren't making our own products, we were going to other refill shops to have them refilled. We just really wanted to have something like this in our community because we live here in Lafayette. Um, so it's just really wanting to bring it to our community. Why is single-use plastic such a big deal? because most of them don't actually get recycled. Um, a lot of people think they're tossing their plastic container into their recycle bin. They think it's going to our recycle company and it's getting turned into new plastic. Um, and it's a circular, you know, sort of process, but it's not at all. Um, new reports just came out la late last year that only about 5% of plastic actually gets recycled and the rest of it is going to landfill or to the ocean. So it is a pretty big, huge problem. And other than buying from refill stores, what are other ways that people can reduce their waste? Yeah, so like you mentioned, reusing things is a really good way to do that. Clothing especially, um, but also, you know, other products that can be reused as well. You can also, like cutting down on waste, food waste actually generates a lot of um, greenhouse gases. And so doing home composting, or if your community doesn't have compost available with their green bins, reaching out to your um, waste company and asking them to start doing it. Um, that's one thing you can do. Um, driving less and walking or biking more, eating less meat. Um, all these things can add up to less of a carbon footprint. Yeah, I agree. And um, other than being eco-friendly, what are the benefits of shopping at Resource Still? Well, you're supporting a local family is number one. We try to bring in local products as much as we can. So not just our family, but um, other local you know, companies as well. Um, yeah, so that would be the big one is keeping your money local and not spending, you know, on Amazon and just creating more wealth for a single person. <laughs> um, what are your hopes in terms of like corporate action or public policy in the future? Yeah, um, I mean, they're pretty broad. I, I wish there could just be like one giant umbrella thing that every product made has to be put into a container that's reusable um, or, you know, every company has to pay their workers a living wage and every company has to recycle their wastewater and yeah. offset their carbon. Um, there's just so many different things that we'd like to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot more that we can do. From breakfast and lunch to dinner and dessert, Food is a big part of our culture and daily schedules. Unfortunately, a third of the world's food is never eaten. Food is wasted at farm, distribution, supplier, and consumer levels. Think of rotten fruit on a field, unattractive produce at a grocery store, bread past its expiration date, or something that's gone bad in the back of your fridge. When food is wasted, all of the energy, resources, and money that went into producing, packaging, and transporting it are wasted too. Uneaten food wastes a whole host of resources, from seeds, water, and energy, 
to hours of labor and financial capital. They also generate greenhouse gases at every stage. 8% of global emissions and 17% of methane emissions in the US is created by one cause, food waste. Reducing food waste starts by being a smart consumer and a smart shopper. See how looking closely at Best Buy dates can help you reduce food waste. Do you remember if our milk is expired? Or? I don't know. We didn't buy it too long ago, so I'm sure it's still good. But do you know what like Best Buy dates mean? I'm not really sure. I'll look it up. It seems like Best Buy dates and Used Buy dates aren't safe to dates at all and are only a way to measure when something is most fresh. The only exception is baby formula. Well, how am I supposed to know something fit to eat? The, U the USDA website says spoiled foods will develop an off odor, flavor, or texture due to naturally occurring spoilage bacteria, and foods are safe to eat often long after the date passes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Um, I feel like we've gotten, we've thrown out so much good food now. Yeah, I bet a lot of grocery stores and restaurants do the same too. Yeah. Hey, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation, and I have some good news. A new law, Senate Bill 1383, was actually passed recently, where by 2025, restaurants, grocery stores, food distributors, and a lot of food generating businesses will have to recover at least 20% of the edible food that would have been disposed of and give the food to people in need through food banks and other organizations. Wow, that's really awesome for people in need and for the environment. More policies and incentives such as these need to be implemented throughout the country to reduce hunger and food waste. By doing these things, we can reap the benefits of reducing food waste for the economy, the environment, society, and human health. Hey dad, what are you up to? Oh, hi, I'm just reading this article. Did you know that animal agriculture is a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions? Yeah, that's a big part of why I'm a vegetarian. Favoring plant-based foods reduces the demand of meat, thereby reducing land clearing, fertilizer use, and greenhouse gas emissions that come from that industry. Oh yeah, I heard that. But are all meats that bad? I want to do more to help the environment, but I'm not sure about cutting out animal products altogether. Yeah, I totally get that. And no, beef is by far the worst. Pork, fish, and chicken all produce less methane and overall greenhouse gases. So making a switch to eat these meats instead of beef is still pretty good. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna keep that in mind when I'm out buying our food. But hey, where's all that greenhouse gas coming from? Well, all that greenhouse gas comes from the land and grain being fed to these cows and other livestock. A crazy amount of grain is fed to livestock every year. An ecologist at Cornell said that if all the grain currently fed to livestock in the US were consumed directly by people, almost 800 million could be fed every year. So what can we do? Even though we know these things about our meat, Eating it is a deeply ingrained thing in our culture. I bet it's hard to get people to change to a more vegetarian diet. A lot of people simply can't imagine giving up meat. And in many rapidly developing countries, meat eating is increasing dramatically. Yeah, that's true. On a personal level, we need to be thinking about our health and the options available to us. Diet is really important to our health, and for some people, it's just really hard to get a balanced diet without eating animal products. But decreasing meat consumption when possible in favor of plant-based foods can have a huge environmental impact, and I think more people should consider it. Yeah, I could definitely eat less meat. And hey, we can start a meatless Monday at home. That sounds really great, and I'm so glad that our family wants to do more to help the environment. Yeah, of course, but individual action can't possibly be the only thing that helps this problem. What's going on with our government? You're right, governments also have a role to play. Currently, $38 billion each year go to subsidize the meat and dairy industries, but only 0.4% of that each year go to subsidize 
fruits and vegetables. Subsidizing healthier and more sustainable food options is a good way to encourage the shift from meats to plant-based foods. This may increase the price of beef and other meats, but it may also decrease the price of fruits and vegetables. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, diet is really important, not only for our health, but the health of our planet. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go to the farmer's market now. Want anything? People should try to eat and purchase locally produced foods when possible. In California, we're lucky to have plenty of locally grown foods that you can buy at farmer's markets such as these. Locally grown foods use less greenhouse gases because they travel less distance, and they also benefit your local economy. Making these changes to shop at more farmer's markets and also eat less meat benefit our communities, the environment, and future generations.